Hey, oh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, appreciate you participating in this Cummins Highway Reconstruction and Design um, Public Meeting. Um, my name is Jeffrey Alexis, here with the Public Works Engineering Division. I am also served as the Project Manager of Design for the, re um, for the Cummins Highway Reconstruction Project. Um, joined here by um, are we, Julia, Julia Campbell, our Deputy Chief of Streets. She's going to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for the introduction, Jeff. Um, I'm just here, but Jeff is running the show. Thanks, Julia. Um, and also, you guys have met Hannah. Um, I'll let her introduce herself once again. Hannah, you're muted. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah. I work on the active transportation team with BTD. And then I'm also joined with my colleague, Francis. Good evening, everyone. Um, Frances Oliveira with the Streets Cabinet, and I am the Community Engagement Specialist. Thank you all. All right. So tonight, um, we're here. We're here to talk about um, the Cummins Highway project. Um, this is our final um, design meeting to give you an update on where we're at um, in regards to this project, um, as well as construction. Um, so today, we want to provide an overview of the project goals um, and a defined design. Um, I believe a lot of you have seen this already, but we want to kind of share this with you. Um, we want to share the general construction timeline. Um, essentially, you mean this process is going to take a couple of years, so we want to let everyone know um, what they should expect in regards to the construction. And lastly, um, we want to share how you'll be able to sign up to receive construction updates um, during um, this process. So Cummins Highway, why are we re reconstructing Cummins Highway? Cummins, Cummins Highway hasn't been um, reconstructed and updated since 1955 um, when streetcars ran along um, the roadway. Um, in order to make more room for, for cars and to uh, allow vehicles or non residents to pass quickly through Cummins Highway. Um, what they did was reconstruct, reconstruct the street to provide um, four lanes of traffic, as you see now um, in the current layout, um, which of course, I mean, has um, led to a number of, of, of issues along the corridor, um, including um, speeding. Um, so what we heard about Cummins Highway and why it needed an upgrade, um, uh, sorry, I'm gonna try to speak slower for the, for the interpreters. Um, but what we heard um, is that the, the, the street is, is people don't feel safe. They don't feel safe crossing the streets. They don't feel safe walking or biking along the corridor. Um, the sidewalks are in disp disrepair. Um, people can't walk along the corridor without tripping, without stumbling their toes um, on, on the streets, um, on the sidewalks that have um, lips and raised sidewalks. Um, of course, the road needs to be paved, repaved. Um, National Grid um, has, been along the, has been along the corridor making repairs to their infrastructure ahead of um, these improvements, but um, even so, I mean, the, the roadway needed some work, um, utility cuts, um, not only from, from National Grid, but also Boston Water and Sewer Commission. Um, and uh, of course, we heard about the speeding. You mean cars traveling, um, regularly passing along the corridor over, 50, 40, over 40 miles per hour. Um, I mean, it's cars coming onto Cummins Highway um, with, without you mean, paying attention. We, we've heard about the crashes over the past couple of weeks. Um, at some of the intersections. Um, and the last thing that we kind of heard is that um, it's very dark along the corridor. Um, just the lighting is just not ad 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 adequate. So this is something that we wanted to kind of take care of as part of this project. So beginning of the spring, uh, we are looking to completely rebuild Cummings Highway from the Wood Avenue at Harvest Street intersection uh, to Fairway Street. Um, we are proposing to um, repave this section approaching um, Mattapan Square approaching River Street. However, um, the majority of the constructed improvements we're looking at um, working with the transportation department to make those improvements as part of the Mattapan Square re um, project or reconstruction project. So in regards to the investment um, on Cummins Highway, this is the first investment or large investment that we're doing um, since 1955, um, since the, the trolley cars were removed. So in regards to um, this project and how much this project has been budgeted for, um, this is a $32 million um, investment along this quarter. Um, we understood that this is a neighborhood that's been divested in the past. Um, there's a lot of issues that needs to be addressed in regards to this quarter, um, and the city is fully committed um, in moving forward and completing this project um, for the residents of this neighborhood. What we tend to do is rebuild the sidewalks, modernize the traffic signals along the corridor, and of course, we, we, we pave this deteriorating street. 
so what we're looking at for um, Cummins Highway um, is essentially to provide a train line neighborhood. We understand that it's called a highway. It's not it's technically it's not a highway, um, but our, our our intent is to make it a, a street that is safer for families, um, to connect to residents, connect residents to open spaces, um, and to make it easier for elders across the street. Um, we want to provide a connection to, I mean, the Franklin Park Zoo, the Neponset Green Ray, uh, River Trail. Um, these are all acts. These are all. Um, public spaces that you mean people in this community should be able to access to wherever they at um wherever they are or wherever they live um in, in, in um, the neighborhood of mattapan so in order to, to develop this design um the, the public process that we went through um ultimately we started um in 2019 this project was initiated in 2018 um we had three community meetings at the Matt Hunt community center um in April of 20, 2019, um, I believe we have another one in February. I think the last one we had was in February 2020, um, where it was more of a town a townhouse, I mean, open, um, open kind of um, meeting where we tried to share, you mean, some of our ideas, hear from the community about how we kind of move forward with this project. Um, well, we understood there was a lot of distrust between the city um, and this neighborhood because of, I mean, some of the issues that they've kind of gone and they felt like they, they weren't addressed. So we wanted to come out and have a conversation, um, which led to, to somewhat of a design where we um, ultimately pr proposed a pilot in October of 2020, which was the first phase, um, to provide a proof of concept um, to, to show that the design that was de developed through these um, conversations through the city's goals and ideals um, to, to meet the needs of, of this neighborhood. Um, also, I mean, to address, um, I mean, some of the safety issues and speeding issues that kind of that occurred um, during the pandemic. I mean, less people were walking, less people were driving, which ultimately created a number of speeding op opportunities along the corridor. Um, throughout this time, we, we, we we, um, my colleagues from BTD, as well as me, a couple of times, we, was, we were out walking on Cummins Highway to talk to people that actually live on this street, who, who experience this street, um, who have to deal with um, the traffic and um, and some of the issues in regards to the, to the infrastructure. Um, we had a number of um, pop-ups and tabling at the Mattapan's Farmers Market from October 2020 to um, the summer of 2023. Um, to just to kind of share information and provide updates as well as um, answer any questions in regards to the Cummins Highway project. In, it, in addition to that, um, as I mentioned, you I mean we 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 were ultimately looking at trust building with this community um, in regards to this project. Um, it's not listed on here, but we did have a number of um, community conversations and virtual conversations um, where we talked about um, not only the the services that the city offers um, and, and what we're trying to do. Um, it, it's, it was about sharing information with the community. Um, but in addition to that, it, it, we wanted to kind of pinpoint what we were looking to accomplish as part of the Cummins Highway project. Um, one of the first um, meetings that we had, um, I believe we coordinated um, with Mattapan Food and Fitness, Powerful Pathways, as well as um, the Urban Outdoor Association to host a special tea talk um, with a gentleman named of, um, of Charles Brown um, we had a number of panelists that kind of talked about black mobility in the U.S. Um, ultimately, um, from that meeting, we kind of jumped into these this series of, of conversations where we talked about heat resiliency um, and climate change. We talked about air quality and pollution, land use, street lighting, public health, stormwater and flooding. We talked about the bus ridership um, and how we can make improvements to um, the bus, th the, the 30 route, the route 30 about 30 bus, um, street trees along the corridor. Um, we had a conversation about intersections um, and, and vehicle flow um, and design of all ages, which pretty much, you mean, which pretty much showed how we make decisions in regards to um, design for a, for a street, for intersections, um, for a project. I mean, we're not just making this up and we're not just working in a vacuum. We are looking at principles and guidelines in order to come up with these um, these proposals. Um, we had a conversation about uh, people with dis disabilities um, as well as public art. And uh, as I mentioned, we all we all wanted to figure out ways that we can um, incorporate all of these elements uh, and make them a component in the Cummins Highway Reconstruction Project. So from there, um, we developed and moved forward with um, this design where we looked at reducing the number of travel lanes on Cummins Highway to make it safer. Um, we looked at the capacity and understood that um, providing one lane in each direction would make Cummins Highway safer, but then also um, it would be if, allow traffic to flow efficiently. Um, so what you can see here, I mean, this is an updated rend rendering from what we've shown in the past, um, which pretty much 
provides a little bit more detail um, of what you can expect Cummins Highway to look like in the future. Um, this is not 100% accurate, but um, it's, it's fairly close. Um, as you can see here, uh, one lane of travel in each direction, um, which makes the crosswalks um, shorter and safer for people crossing. Um, we're looking at um, adding a number of trees along the corridor. We're, we're proposing over 100 trees along the corridor. We, uh, we tried to maintain, um, I believe, all of the existing trees, street trees along the corridor. Maybe we may have had to remove one um, due to, to design. Um, but we will be providing um, green spaces, new street lines all along the corridor. As you can see here, this is a dual arm street light. We'll, street light, which will provide lighting, um, not only for the street, but also for the bicycle uh, bicycle lane, as well as the sidewalks. Um, I mean, to address the, one of the main issues that, that the community expresses that they felt like it was dark um, on Cummins Highway. Um, we will be providing parking um, along the curb. And um, that's something that, that you mean, the community has expressed that they wanted us to, to retain along the corridor. And we made sure that we um, allocated um, sufficient space along the corridor. Here was another look at Cummins Highway at the intersection of Rockingham. Um, as I mentioned, you have the dual um, street lights for the roadways and for the sidewalks. There'll be new sidewalks all along the corridor. Um, we'll be repaving the roadway. Um, it'll be a smooth roadway, not, which, not, not what's out there right now. Um, we're, we're proposing raised crosswalks. So raised crosswalks, the, the, the roadway at, um, along the, the, the crosswalks will be raised. Um, so pedestrians walking along um, across walking along the street uh, will be at an elevated um, elevated level. So you mean the cars that are driving up to um, I'm not totally sure what the name of the street is, but on, on all the approaches will have to slow down in order to, to, to drive up and then over um, the crosswalk. So this this is a, a traffic calming, calming element that makes it safer for pedestrians to cross streets. Um, as I mentioned, we were providing green spaces all, all along on the corridor. I mean, we, we wanted to take a look at um, improving. I mean, we were designing for resiliency um, and sustainability. sustainability. It's, a, it's a major component of part of this project. So we are looking at proposing green infrastructure, um, bioswells, um, uh, planters, um, planting spaces um, all along the corridor to reduce, reduce flow, um, flooding um, during storms. Um, Lastly, we want to talk about the roundabout. Um, this was the design element that we wanted to to, to try to manage this um, intersection in, in a lot more safer way to make it more um, accessible for pedestrians, cyclists, um, as well as vehicles. Um, as, as we all know, it's it's very difficult for vehicles to turn on and off of Way Boston Street to turn in and out of Great Greenfield Road. Um, so with this with this design, um, you mean of course it, it's it's a roundabout. I mean it's a, it's a one lane of traffic. A one travel lane that goes around um, the roundabout in order to to access Cummins Highway, um, or if you want to take a U turn. I mean, it, it's it's um, as I mentioned, shortens the crossing distance, crossing distances at this intersection where the crossing distances are currently, you mean, 70, 80 feet um, long. So that amounts to, you mean, p individuals, pedestrians spending a lot of time on this roadway or in the street. Um, this ultimately looks at making it safer for, for not only for pedestrians to cross, for cyclists to get through, but also to make it safer for, um, for, for cars to slow them down ultimately. As I mentioned, resiliency and sustainability has been a major um, important component of this project. Um, as part of this project, um, the residents requested that we take a look at the air quality along the corridor. Um, as part of our, our design, um, our preliminary design, we did install um, eight sensors on street poles along the corridor um, and one in the Mattapan, um, Mattahunt Woods. Um, what we learned was that the air quality um, along the corridor was, was similar to, you mean, other levels that we observed um, in Boston. Um, there was no discernible difference um, in, in, the, in the air quality along Cummins Highway. Um, however, the air pollution was about 10% lower um, in the Mattahunt Woods, I mean, which is urban wild, so, I mean, which is to be understood. Understood. Um, but um, what we plan on doing, um, they were removed, I believe, as of um, January or February of this year. Um, we are planning on um, reinstalling them 
once the construction is completed to see you mean what effects that you mean this design and the improvements that we've made not only um, in the infrastructure along the corridor but also the green um, infrastructure improvements um, will have if they will have an impact um, on the air quality as a whole so that's something that we're, we're taking a look at and we're still working through um, as of right now and if you want if you have any more questions um, or concerns or just want to know inf more information about the air quality please reach out to us and we'll, we'll get that information to you um, in addition to the Cummins Highway project, um, we're also looking at making um, some safety improvements um, in the neighborhood. I mean, so the, the car streets and approaches, south side, north side, um, neighborhoods of Cummins Highway. Um, we're adding speed humps across Boston um, to calm, calm the side streets. One of the one of the issues that we heard about this project and during the pilot was that uh, people were using the side streets um, as cut throughs. Um, we are looking at providing speed humps to, to ultimately slow down speeds on these residential streets. Um, and um, in addition to that, um, which will slow speeds to 20 to 20 to 20 to 25 miles per hour. Uh, but in, in, in addition to that, um, Public Works Department, we are looking at um, as part of our annual um, state of good repair roadway reconstruction program to um, address some of the, the, the side streets that need attention. Um, there, are, there are a number of side streets on the north side and south side of Cum Cummins Highway that need um, sidewalk repairs. I mean, some of them don't have sidewalks. Some of them, the roadways are in good condition. So um, the ramps may not be um, compliant. So we are looking at making those improvements, albeit after the, the Cummins Highway um, project is completed. We will need, we'll need to allocate um, budgeting for that. But um, that is something that we are looking at, at, at doing as part um, of this project and kind of just continuing that conversation um, with the community. So in regards to construction, um, we're ready to start this spring. Um, I hope you guys are as happy as I am. Uh, we're, we're, we're finally getting the shovel in the ground. Um, we're hoping to have uh, construction completed um, by the end of 2026. Um, so that's the roadway completed, tree plantings, um, new lights, green infrastructure. Um, hopefully we'll have a nice ribbon cutting um, that people can, can attend. Um, but what we're looking at for construction during this time um, we're still working on, on the actual start times for the quarter of when construction will start. Of course, and we understand, you mean the, the peak traffic in the morning, peak traffic in the, tra traffic in the afternoon um, during those peak hours. So we're looking at construction um, at least being halted on a day-to-day -day basis, um, Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Um, we're still working on how we can kind of get this, this construction completed um, in a more accelerated manner. Um, we, we know the community has been dealing with construction um, for the past, you mean four or five years with the utility um, improvements that are being done. So we're, we're looking at how we can make this um, make this less of a disruption for you in the long term. Um, if you have any questions, you want to be updated um, in regards to the Cummins Highway and the construction. Um, here's the website here at boston.gov slash um, Cummins dash highway. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, I mean, you can also check out um, you can also sign up um, or send emails to Cummins at Boston.gov. So if you want to learn more, Cummins Highway Project Info, these are the websites. Um, I believe someone might be putting them in the chat um, if you can copy and paste. But Thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you, Hannah. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I did want to note that we have um, a couple of, a number of people from across the streets cabinet here, including um, our colleagues, Norman and Tan, who are part of the construction management team. Um, and maybe I'll let them introduce themselves if they would like to. Good evening. Go ahead, go ahead Norman, you go first. Good evening, Norman Parks here, Chief Engineer for City of Boston Construction Management, um, assisting in running this operation here for the Cummins Highway project here. Hi everyone, I'm Tan Pham. I'm the engineer for the construction management section and uh, I'll be manage, will help uh, manage this uh, Cummins Highway project. Um, and so we have a number of people who can answer your questions today. Um, I also wanted to, note that we have some electeds um, on this meeting and we're passing out onto them, we would like to introduce themselves as well.
Um, great. Okay. So we, so I know we have a couple questions in the chat um, and this will work out. If we have questions in the chat, we'll just alternate between um, answering your questions and then also um, as you're welcome to raise your hand and then we'll unmute you um, so that you're able to um, ask a question. Um, so first I'm going to, I see that Ruth George has asked a question, so I'm going to unmute you. Thank you, Hannah. Um, and thank you, Jeff, for the updates. In our last meeting, I asked a few questions as it relates to signage around the project, um, our long Cummings Highway, trying to raise visibility for the residents that um, who are pedestrians and they may not live there, but they walk and drive in that area. If there would be signage out there that would be um, reasonably sized so that they are aware of the construction that's going to be happening there. That was one of the questions that I asked last time. I didn't see that embedded in the response here. So just following up with that, the second question that was asked had to do with the roundabout um, concerns about um, those who are new to the area that may not be familiar with driving in and around roundabouts, the need to have potentially transcribed, um, um, translated signage that directed individuals on how to properly utilize the roundabout. Those are just two questions. Both of them to me have issues of safety as it relates to the work and how it's being done. So I, I just wanted to kind of get some updates around both of those if possible. Thank you, Ruth. Um, quick question, Hannah, is it okay for me to stop, stop sharing? Is that fine? All right. All right. Um, uh, thank you, Ruth, for your questions. Um, uh, yes, we, we are working um, with our design consultant as well as the transportation department um, in regards to the signage along the corridor. Um, I believe at the last meeting, um, one of the questions that was asked was, um, for additional signage at the roundabout, as well as additional signage um, on, I guess, at some of the intersections and the crossings along the corridor. Um, I, I, just to just to clarify, are you referring to the, the the RFB and the flashing lights? Is that what you're also referring to? That would also be fine. Yep, I remember that was also part of the conversation. Okay. Um, so. We we got an answer for the RFBs, um, which is essentially um, at this time we're going to install the project um, as um, designed, as shown. Um, we are going to monitor um, the corridor because ultimately a lot of the improvements that we're proposing along the corridor should make it safer. Um, if there are issues that we are noticing, as as I mean, we're also going to be evaluating the the project, but then also if if residents are seeing issues, um, that's something that we can definitely. Um, take a second look at um, and make those, those improvements as needed. Um, for this project, I mean, one of the main things that we want to do is um, analysis and evaluate, um, whether it's qualitative or quantitative. We want to take a look at this as part of um, this design process, I mean, to, to do a better job. I mean, ultimately, we're going to take a look at the project uh, and see what we can do with this, if there's improvements that we can make to make it safer, um, we're definitely going to continue to do so. Um, regarding the signage, um, and, and translated signs. Um, I mean, all, all of my colleagues from BTD probably jump into that a little bit more, but I, from my understanding is that we're um, installing um, traffic signs that are, um, that according to the MT, MUTCD um, guides and regulations. Um, we're, we're, we're installing signs that, you mean, that are used for safety. Um, we're not necessarily developing our own signs to, to post um, along the corridor, but, um, in terms of, you mean, yielding for pedestrians, I mean, that, that is something that we are looking at um, in, in, in installing um, along the corridor ahead of the, the roundabout to make it safer, to make people know, to let people know um, that pedestrians are using any spaces. 
Um, yeah, I I don't know I don't know if we can if there's anything we can do in regards to um, uh, instructing people how to use roundabouts. Um, so even if it's not the instruction, just the directional signs on the roundabout for those who are bilingual. We have a large Haitian population in the community that lives here. We also have a growing Latino population. I know throughout the city, I've seen other parts where sometimes signs are translated. And so I guess I'm trying to understand, especially for those who've never used it, if there's an opportunity to just put a sign that's within the roundabout, directing them in another language. Um, I, I am concerned that we're in doing this, like some of the, as we're, I'm not concerned. I'd like to believe that as we're doing these updates, we're taking into consideration bilingual populations. Yeah, I can answer that real quick. Um, yes, we did take note of your concern at the last meeting. And what we can do is we can install um, corrugated, we can install corrugated cardboard posters on um, our street poles, these will be sort of temporary, but we've installed them across the city whenever there's a new change to a traffic signal um, or street configuration. Um, we can definitely put those up. Uh, just, I'm just going to jump in very quickly, Hannah. Um, so Ruth, thank you for uh, the comments and the concerns, and I apologize because I wasn't at that last meeting, but um, one of the things that our team and and Jeff and Industries Cabinet as a whole um, are trying to be very sensitive to the fact that a lot of our traffic control signs are written in English or they're text only. And that honestly, even for someone who is English as a primary or first language, they are difficult to get the information quickly because you're trying to focus on driving your multi-ton vehicle, right? So um, the signs at the roundabout, there will be uh, several signs on all of the approaches and inside the roundabout center that either communicate to folks to keep right or show a series of arrows for the circulation of the direction of the roundabout itself. So trying to make use, as you rightfully pointed out, um, whatever signs are available and, and allowed by law um, that communicate that information without using English words. Thank you. That is that's really what I was I was advocating for. I appreciate that clarification, John. And thank you, Hannah, for also identifying that those signs will be put up. Um, just so as we, um, for example, the Cummins Highway Neighborhood Association is here, we can reiterate to our, our associate members that those signs are going to go up, and, and so that they can raise awareness locally. We appreciate both of your, all three of your feedback. Thank you. Um, I am going to go to a question from the chat. Gisela, you asked a question about where construction will begin. Um, Norman, would you be able to provide some information about construction management plans? Yes, I'm sorry, yes. Um... So we're looking at a bar to start this. We already started this process now as far as doing some test pits uh, for some utilities, um, having coordination with utilities as far as the work, work scope that we're doing there along Cummins Highway. Um, we're looking to somewhere around shovels in the ground, probably the, around the 14th, somewhere the second week of April. Um, we're still configuring that timeline um, as we go into the test pits, test pits and um, working along. But somewhere you see the middle of April, we'll be starting the, the process there, starting coming from Wood Ave, working our way down to Fairway um, in a slow process and it's digging. Uh, we're still coordinating with the utilities as far as the methodology, which we'll be using to uh, to dis disassemble the, the roadway there. Yeah, and so we will definitely send out um, more details by email once we have it. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to Shaquana, who asks, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi, good good afternoon, everyone. Um, I I've been I've lived here for like four years, and um, I was not aware of the entire thing, but so far, um, I just have a few questions because in the four years I've lived here, I've seen the um the design and um. 
I have some questions. So the traffic, they said that they're doing this to what, to slow down traffic or to improve traffic? Because I live 15 minutes from um, Mattapan Square and that's walking. And it takes me 20 minutes to drive down there with this um with this incoming design also um i don't live everywhere else i only live here so i can only speak i know we're taking um all this money and infrastructure with tax and everything to build um bike lanes are we gonna start um charging bike bicycle riders um excise tax as well because i to be honest i see more handicaps um i feel like the if those lanes were made for handicaps i would feel better cuz i see more handicapped people um in their scooters on Cummins highway than i do see cyclists um also instead of um you put in all those some of those stuff there um the sleeping um the sleeping humps will be better to slow down speeding because Speeding, what I've noticed while living here, speeding happens between a certain time of day. It happens really early in the morning when there is less um, vehicles on the road or probably really late at night. Thank, thank you, Shaquana. Um, all right, I'm going to try to address um, your questions or your comments. I, I did get um, a couple of them down. Um, and um, in regards to the traffic on Cummins Highway, um, yes, we, we did an analysis um, along the quarter in regards to the number of travel lanes. Um, and um, in regards to the capacity, Cummins Highway, the engineer shows that it doesn't need four travel lanes. Um, we understand that there, there are concerns with traffic congestion along the quarter, um, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to implement um, the pilot, which did um, which did show us that traffic could flow um, and it could work. I mean, there were some issues, there were some concerns, um, mainly the, the median. The median had to go um, just in regards to vehicles being able to pass, emergency vehicles, um, though that did cause a concern during the pilot, um, which we did um, analyze and use the information from to, to improve on this design. Um, in regards to, you mean, driving into Mattapan Square, you're absolutely correct. Um, the Mattapan Square intersection pretty much creates a block um, along Cummins Highway, on Blue Hill Ave, as well as River Street, um, which is why the, the transportation department is looking at providing um, improvements to that intersection, as well as traffic signal improvements. One of the things that they did mention is that they are working on is adding an additional phase for Cummins Highway to provide more traffic to flow out of Cummins Highway. Um, as part of this project, um, Although we are proposing a, 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 to reduce the number of travel lanes on the quarter from um, Hollingsworth Street down to Mattapan Square, we are still maintaining two lanes approaching Mattapan Square for the exact reason that you mentioned, like the, the, the traffic that will need to flow. So we have to provide that capacity. Um, but um, what, as you mentioned, all, like on other days, uh, other times during the day, there is there is a ample opportunity for, for average drivers to speed on Cummins Highway. There's a number of crashes on, along the corridor, um, not just people getting hit, but also other vehicles getting hit, um, as well as um, property damage. Um, there's, there's crashes that, that don't get reported to EMS, to the BPD, you mean, because, you mean, no one was injured. Um, so th this, this is exactly what we're trying to tackle as part of this project, in addition to, to making the road safer for all modes of traffic. So not just cars, but also pedestrians, as well as um, cyclists. I mean, we, we, we have this space, so we want to provide um, more um, more safer and, and better accommodations for, I mean, people who are handicapped or disabled um, to, to walk along this corridor. So, I mean, we, we wanted to take a look at all users as part of this project, um, and, and traffic was definitely one of them, and that's something that we, we would continue to address um, as part of the Mattapan Square reconstruction project. Um, which is, I mean, how we 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 tend tend to look at, you I mean, providing or maintaining traffic flow along the corridor. Um, I believe that was. That was just one. Um, yeah, because I was asking also about the bi the bike lanes. So we live in we live in Boston, and I we live in Massachusetts, and we have warm times not so frequently. This is like one of the rare years where. Um, we have such a nice weather and 
throughout the year, you probably see one, maybe two cyclists on the, on the street. And um, we're taking up an entire section of street. As I said, if it was being used for handicaps, I would feel better because I do see a lot more people in scooters um, going about their business than um, than I do see bikes than I do see people on bikes. Um, and I don't and I feel like that is not being mentioned at all. Um, also, um, for the for the for the bus, um, there's nothing being done pertaining to the MBTA for the people in the community because it takes 30 minutes for one for one bus to arrive. And just imagine you're paying your tax, you're paying for this ride and you're spent, you have to wait 30 minutes for the same ride. Like these are these are some of the issues that I feel like that's not being addressed concerning the development. Like everyone is taking the money and doing all these stuff and nobody's addressing what um what the people in the community is really that's really affecting them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I I'll I'll address the bikes. Um Ultimately, as I mentioned, like we're 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 reducing the number of travel lanes on Cummins Highway. It's not for a bike project. Um, we're we're ultimately looking at um, making this roadway safer. I mean, safety is 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 the, the the major goal, the precipice of this project because of the number of crashes along the corridor, because of the number of people who've been injured along this corridor. Um, we have the space to allocate to to the bike lanes. Um, and uh, I mean, of, of course, I mean you you may not see a lot of people biking on Cummins Highway um, because Personally, I don't feel like it's safe to. Um, I've I've rode in, I've rode my bike on Cummins Highway uh, before the pilot, during the pilot. Um, I mean, there was a gentleman who was killed riding his bike on Cummins Highway. Um, it, it's as it currently stands right now, it's not a, a safe, in my opinion, a safe road to ride your bike on because of the speeding. Um, what, what we what we're ultimately you mean aiming to do is to make it safer for people who do want a bike. And of course, I mean, with the weather that's changing, the weather that's improving, it's going to provide access to, I mean, in the Ponza Greenway, it's going to provide access to the Franklin Park and those bike lanes that were built in those areas. Um, ultimately, the intent is to, you mean, provide these accommodations for the people who actually lived here who want to ride their bikes. I mean, I've, I've been out on Cummins Highway and seen a bunch of kids riding their bikes on some of the side streets. I mean, it, it would be great if they'd be able to ride their bikes on Cummins Highway in a safe space um, and then we won't have to worry about cars or pedestrians. Um, so that's ultimately what we're looking at. We're looking at providing accommodations for all, for all users. You mean to to get around Boston? I mean that's that's ultimately what it is. And 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 we're looking at providing those accommodations as part of this project. Um, in, in regards to the MBTA, um, I hear you. Um, we know that the headways on the, the Route 30 bus are, are around 20 to 30 minutes um, during the day. Um, it may be longer in some of the the, the off peak hours. Um, as part of this project, we are proposing. Um, better, better infrastructure for for the MBTA bus stops. Um, we 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 were looking at providing um, additional shelters along the quarter, which we are try still trying to do. Um, that's still a conversation with the MBTA we're trying to have. Like even like the e ink signs that kind of you may have real time displays about when time what time the buses are coming. Those are all things that we are still trying to aim to do. And and, and MBTA does have some pilots, um, and and we did request. For, for some of those some shelters be, to be installed on Cummins Highway. So we're still working through that. Um, we'll have this space along Cummins Highway. We are providing ADA compliant um, bus stops in regards to their guidelines as of today. Um, so that, that that is another improvement that we are. We, we have made it um, substantial improvements in regards to this design um, for the MBTA bus stops. But as I mentioned, like we're, we're continuing to, to, to try to do more um, as part of this project, even after it's completed. Um, thank you. I'm going to move on to Rudy. Thank you, Hannah. Hi, everyone. I'm Whitney Celestin. I'm your former Madam Liaison, preceded by Ruth, not then myself and Eric took over. So and I do want to thank um, all our engineers, all the BTD team for all their work on this project. We definitely want to see um, better things come to the neighborhood. My question is around um, the section that you shared around the sun ago, <clears throat> you shared around 651 and I'm gonna put in the chat so everyone can take a look at it. So when you open up that image, you'll see that for me, in my opinion, it's a little slim. And what I'm thinking about is the fact that the Matterhunt school is up the, up the street 
It also hosts the Tucson River Tio Cultural Center. As you know, um, enrollment is going up at that school. That's um, a Haitian Creole bilingual school, the first one in the city of Boston. And so with a larger Haitian population coming on, right, there are going to be more school buses, more cars dropping off kids. I've been asking this question since this project started and then the February meeting. And again, we wanna put all our trust into our engineers and their assessment. So my question is around, um, what was the assessment like around the width of this entry for this roundabout or any other ones along the way? Because I'm concerned about the width and school buses using it. School buses are not always small. There are larger school buses. And also thinking about how the hump will affect that. Like what was your assessment like around this area, um, considering these features um, and the fact that large, not just school buses, large trucks also travel that road a lot. So thanks for any feedback. Thank, thank you, Rudney. Um, so it, yeah, so in, in regards to um, the, the travel lanes along the corridor, um, they're, they're 11 feet wide. Um, they're, I mean, standard um, width for, for, for roadways. Um, for for travel lanes along the uh, throughout the city of Boston, um, we've honestly have gone down to you mean ten feet wide um, travel lanes throughout the city in certain locations. Um, the MBTA buses they want they want at least ten and a half. Um, so buses school buses will have no issues. I mean traveling along Cummins Highway in regards to the eleven feet wide um, travel lane that we are providing as part of this, part of this project. Around the roundabout, um, the roundabout the travel lane for the roundabout technically. Um, the space that's available is 15 feet wide. Um, in addition to that, um, the roundabout is actually mountable. Um, because of the Sunoco gas station and because of their um, their operations in terms of the, the, the fuel tankers, um, we had to provide a, a mountable roundabout in order for them to be able to make I mean, a, a, a U-turn or, I mean, to go around um, this intersection in a safe manner that, you I mean, it's not going to impact, I mean, other um, other approaching traffic. So, um, yes, absolutely. That's something that we looked at. Um, we did have conversations with, this, with the gas um, station owner at Sunoco um, in regards to this, um, and so they are aware. Um, but in terms of the, 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 the roadway widths, um, as I mentioned, like we're going from a four lane to a two lane. So we, we, we definitely had enough um, space to accommodate um, proper and appropriate um, travel lanes um, along the corridor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vicki, you're next. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, I am, first off, I'm Vicki Siggers. Um, Part of Mattapan Food and Fitness slash Mattapan Food Access Manager slash Farmers Market Manager. And because we're at the um, parking lot, city parking lot number um, 14, which faces Cummings Highway, what I'm asking is if you can please let us know and share with me or share with all of us how we can navigate to make sure that um, our customers and guests are being able to come to the farmer's market safely. We're on Cummings and Fairway. Can you let, can you tell me where you're going to start construction? That's my yes. first. Please, please, please proceed. Yes, listening. Do you want? Do you want me to answer? Please, somebody. Yes, I'll answer. Thank, thank, thank you, Vicky. Oh, definitely, you're on our contact list. You're on our agenda. Um, we are working through the pre-construction process. Um, we are. You met, you met um, Tan and Norman earlier um, as part of this meeting. Um, Tan will be the resident engineer out on the field working on this project, um, working with the contractor. Um, more than likely, you'll probably see him out there um, if you're out there during the week. Um, regarding the Mattapan Farmer's Market, absolutely. Um, we, we, all our contractors are 
um, are not, or, or as part of their, their construction are supposed to maintain access to any of the businesses along any of the projects and corridors that they work on. Um, in, in regards to construction, it is disruptive. Um, we understand that, I mean, the road is going to be reconstructed, the sidewalks are going to be reconstructed, reconstructed. For the most part, um, and, and I'll let construction management jump in um, if they have anything uh, to add. Um, I, I, I know from my time with them, like, generally, if a sidewalk needs to be reconstructed, I mean, it happened Monday through Friday, um, and they try not to leave the, the, the sidewalks open. Um, in term, not, not open in terms of um, open for access, but um, open where, I mean, the concrete is gone, there's just gravel, the, the sidewalk is like in, inaccessible. Um, generally, if they're, if they're reconstructing the sidewalk and they, they need to repour the concrete, that is something they try to do prior to the weekend so that they don't want to have a, a sidewalk to be closed over the weekend, um, which ultimately will, will hopefully um, allow, you mean, access and, and allow people to, I, I know they line up right on Fairway around Cummins Highway in order to enter into the Mattapan Farmers Market. Um, but they, they should be reaching out to you um, to have a conversation to let you know when construction is going to start, when it's going to be in your area. Um, as I mentioned, like there, there is a um, a link that you can sign off an update for updates. But um, they they are supposed to be reaching out to you um, specifically to have that conversation um, and and let you know what 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 to expect. Um, but ultimately, they 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 know that they they need to um, look out for 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 you in regards to um, your business. Um. Um, Tan, Tan or Norman, did you guys want to add anything? Hi, Vicky. I'm Tan. I'll be the engineer for that project. Um, I will sure be let you, uh, you know, get you posted and uh, keep you updated as the pro uh, as the project going. Um, I will be on site almost every day. Uh, if you have any concern, you can come out and look for me or or look for even the contract. They're gonna work with you. Mm -hmm. If if you have any concern, you can let me know if the contract not working or you know not doing what they're supposed to do, and uh, we'll we do everything we can to uh, make sure you get in and out of the parking lot. All the, right. The um, the farmers market, the Mattapan Square farmers market, opens July thirteenth. I know that you guys are going to be starting whoever is going to be starting in April. That's fine. I just need to make sure that I'm in contact with others so that we are uh, making sure that everything that we need to bring for our affordable, um, locally grown food, along with all the services and programs that we're planning will be able to happen. And we are all doing it together. Yes, absolutely. And, and our um, our community engagement team, they will be connecting you with the construction management team um, just to provide you with that information. And of course, give you a heads up, um, give you notification on, on when they're gonna be in that area um, for the for the construction. Okay. You're, 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 on, you're on our list, we got you. <laughs> Thank As you we, so very much. If I may add to that, if I may, good, good evening again. Um, yes, we're, we're planning. We're definitely working with all, all the all of the um, business owners there along the corridor of Blue, of um, sorry Cummins Highway. Um, we've already started talking with um, David's Funeral Home, um, the the local business of the gas stations. Um, uh, we've we've also talked spoken with um, the other funeral home. It used to be Shields, but now it's Lopes Lopes uh, Lopes Funeral Home. And that you know we're working along with them as far as. Uh, as he gets services there and how that's going to be difficult on his business because it's always been small along that area of Hollingsworth and Cummins Highway. Um, and definitely we can, um, we will, we working along with with the uh, farmer's market, the store there um, and working along. Keep in mind, we're not, the last part of this project we're going to do would be the corridor of redoing the roadway from River Street to Fairway. So that corridor will, will be accessible um, with with no restrictions of any type of construction going on there for the for the beginning. Um, so yes, we, we'll definitely keep all, all those things in mind, along with the residents there and how it would affect. Um, the contractor is sympathetic to the whole bit. Um, he was on a walkthrough there two weeks ago. Um, he's a very good uh, contractor. It's McCourt that's doing the work along there. 
So, um, and I'm going to be out there along with along with the engineers Tan and my associate Bob Estrella will be out there to make sure this uh, project goes along as smooth as possible um, in working along with the residents there, and of course the liaisons and community engagements. If there is a um, owners, you know, business local businesses meeting, I would like for you to um, allow matter pan food and fitness to be a part of that because the farmers market is it is a business and it is a place where people can um, get locally grown food and other resources so please I ask that you include us thank you Abs Ricky. absolutely yes. thank you. go ahead Hannah um I'm going to call on Ioma. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, it's, I just it's okay. Ioma. Ioma. Yep. Ioma. Thank yep. you. No problem. Hi. So I am a Cummins Highway resident. I've been on Cummins Highway for about 19 years, but I've been a Madison resident for about 30 years. Um, and I know when I remember when they began doing their analysis on Cummins Highway in 2020. And my first thoughts was like, well, you're not really getting the proper analysis of Cummins Highway because this is a pandemic. Nobody's on the road. There's no buses. And so you say that we don't need the four lanes. But if you see in the morning, there are parents lined up on Cummins Highway. So the other lanes are getting used by drivers that are going to work. So I don't know if we thought that through when we think about the bus drive. Because I think Rudney brought this up about the buses and parents parking. So that's something to consider. I don't know if we took that into consideration. Like I know there are parking spots, but remember now they're they're building all these new buildings around Cummins Highway. So these parking spots are going to be taken up so by residents that live in the area on and on Cummins Highway. And then you have additional people that's going to be coming in the morning now to park to wait for these buses to come. And these buses are going to be pulled over. These kids take forever to get on the bus. So that's going to be more traffic. Just things to just consider when we're thinking about just our two lanes. Another thing I wanted to mention was we said we did our analysis. I know you guys looked at Greenfield and Cummins Highway and you called that a high traffic, um, high crash area. I don't know, a safety risk, but by my house, which is, in, which is a part of your design there, part of your, when you show your picture, that's where all the crashes happen. The last time you guys spoke to Mattapan, I said this on the meeting, right after that meeting, there were seven crashes right in the same spot that I told you guys crashes happen. You were not going to see that on your analysis because you did it in 2020 when there was hardly no traffic. There was nobody really riding on the road. But even during COVID, there was still some traffic time traffic happening here. So I just have concerns about that particular area. And I know you say, oh, we're raising the road. Cars stop. It's not like cars are just going straight through four ways. They stop. See every day, hesitation. I see missed crashes every single day. And I'm telling, I do the analysis. I, I live right on Cummins Highway and, I, and, my, and my office is in the, on the third floor. So I can look on Cummins Highway every day. I see near miss crashes every day. So these are things that I don't think is being considered. So when I say, you said you came to the community, I was walking the whole of 2020. I worked in Mattapan Community Health Center. So I walked Cummins Highway. I never, nobody ever asked me how I felt. Like, what is your concerns? And I would have told you is the crashes that happened. I had cars crash into my house. This is why I'm so passionate about the crashes that happen on Cummins Highway. And that is really my concern about the safety of the elders. I've lived here for 30 years, so I've known a lot of people that live in this community. I have a lot of my friends, their parents still live here. They walk to the, the gas station every day to go play their numbers. I worry about people like her. Because somebody, just the other day, they were on Cummins Highway, they were on the sidewalk. Now we got pedestrians we have to worry about, bicycle riders we have to worry about people in their cars we have to worry about. So I'm, I'm bringing this to your concern. So when you consider that intersection, that four-way intersection, even with the rays, you're still gonna get some accidents there. And I can give you an example, Washington Street and Fuller Street. There was an intersection, four-way, there wasn't even, a, I don't even know if that was four-way, but accidents used to happen there all the time. They had to put a light there because it was crazy. So many accidents. I, this was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. So I just want you to think of when you think of your analysis, think about it that way. Because this is that's a four-way traffic and it's very dangerous. 
I'm done. Thank, thank you for your comments. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, I mean, the, the intent of this pro this project is to improve safety. Um, in, in regards to our traffic analysis, um, as I mentioned, this project started in 2018. Um, the traffic analysis that, analysis that we did for Cummins Highway was based on the numbers from 2018, uh, when traffic was a lot more significantly higher um, than during the pandemic. So we used that analysis and that data in order to design Cummins Highway um, in regards to the number of, of, of travel lanes that that, that this, this roadway required. Um, so in terms of, you mean COVID, yes, we took, we, we, we did look at the traffic and analysis um, and, 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 and we did do, I mean, traffic studies along the corridor during COVID. Um, we've, we've done a significant amount of, of, of traffic collection along Cummins Highway as part of the pilot, after the pilot. Um, How about crashes though? How about the number of crashes on Cummins Highway? Because if you said you started in 2018, the crashes, I started counting the number of crashes in 2017 when the first car crashed into my house. I had two crashes into my house. So when the first yeah. car crashed, I'm like, what's happening on Cummins Highway? And so there have probably been a significant, there was a significant amount of accidents between 2017 and 2020. So yeah, I, I, that. So yeah, no, we 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 understand. I I, I completely understand. Like I, I I grew up in Mattapan. I grew up in Mattapan. Um, I had a friend of mine who actually lived on Cummins Highway as well. So like I I'm familiar with the neighborhood. I'm familiar with the crashes. I'm familiar with the speeding all on the corridor. Um, I'm familiar with just the 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 the, the traffic. Um, on a, on a daily basis, on the weekends, during the weekdays, um, so like I I I understand. I mean, and, and that's one of the things that we're looking at. You mean improving on the quarter? That's why we that's why we we just we decided to go with one lane in each direction because ultimately what that's going to do is slow down the the cars that are actually traveling on Cummins Highway. I mean, crashes don't just happen. I mean, like like we we've gone away from calling crashes accidents because they're not accidents. There's, there there are things that are actually being done that that pretty much give drivers that 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 increases the the the, the opportunity um or the likelihood that a, a, a driver is going to crash um so that's what we're trying to remove as part of this project that's what we're trying to do we're trying to slow down slow vehicles down if cars aren't driving as fast as they used to on cummins highway you I mean there there are going to be less crashes for cars that are coming out of the side streets because the side streets i think i believe you're talking about savannah and rugby which is it's been on our radar for years. We've had right. the, the property owner ask us to to put a guardrail at that location. That was um, that's that, I'm talking about that property. That's the property yeah. I'm talking about. Completely understood. Completely understood. Yes. Um, what what I'm trying to express is that the raised crossings that we are proposing on all the approaches, ultimately cars are going to have to slow down when entering and exiting off of the approaches, off the side streets. If they don't, they're going to damage their vehicles. Like it's not it's not it's not a comfortable ride to have to ride up and then kind of ride straight for about 10 feet and then kind of ride down. If you're speeding around, if you're speeding over that hump to get onto Cummins Highway, which is now a one lane roadway, it, if, if someone's doing that, then I mean, that's that's not that's out of our control. But in terms of the engineering design and how we're, we're looking to slow vehicles down, this is this is the, the right way to do it to to also maintain traffic flow along the corridor. Um, I, I drive on Cummins Highway throughout the day. Um, a lot of the times, you, you're not seeing like definitely the peak hours. You mean there's cars on on in both lanes, especially when they when they need a queue approaching Mattapan Square. But I, ideally, for the most of the point, for the most of the, the 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 time, you mean you have cars that are driving. You mean one behind the other. You mean along the corridor on both sides. So in those two lanes, you'll have one car behind the other. They're driving at whatever speed they want to drive. But I mean, you rarely see on Cummins Highway unless it's during the peak hours where you their cars side by side driving down Cummins Highway. Um, so that that's what we're we're looking at, and, and we know that outside of those peak hours, people are speeding, people are driving 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. It's it's very easy to to get into a crash. You mean if a car is entering and exiting out of Mattapan uh, of of Cummins Highway if you're driving 50 miles an hour. Um, it, it's 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 a recipe for, for crashes. So, I mean, that's something that we're trying to reduce along this quarter because we know that it, it we know the crashes happen. I mean, we, we hear about them all the time. Uh, we know there was a hit and, a hit and run the other day um, at, at Brockton and Bismarck. Um, so like, that's ultimately what we're trying to prevent as, as part of these designs. Like we, we, we have to design our roadways to improve safety. Um, and that, and, and in order to improve safety, you have to slow cars down. So that, that's, that's what, 
um, reducing the number of travel lanes is 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 um is meant to um, accomplish. I think putting stop signs there too, it, on coming highway because you gotta. I'm telling you, even with the single lane, you're gonna still speed. But that's just my that's my opinion on it. I see it happen on Washington Street. I don't know why it wouldn't happen on Cummins Highway. But I mean, okay, come, well, be, be, see, so that's the, the, we looked at. We looked at everything. We looked at. We looked at. Um, there's there's certain type of traffic calming elements or, or measures that we can use on a street like Cummins Highway. Cummins Highway, it's it's a it's an arterial. Um, I mean, there there are there are a number of, of traffic elements that are not appropriate for Cummins Highway. One of the one of the issues, or one of the requests that we've gotten throughout this process was speed humps. We can't propose speed humps on Cummins Highway because of the classification of roadway that it is. You I mean you have emergency vehicles using this roadway? Um, if you have an, a fire truck or an ambulance who needs to get through, you I mean ideally they're going to be using Cummins Highway. You I mean they can't hit a speed bump every 250 feet. So like like. So that ideally, I mean, we're looking at this design to still maintain a fully functioning, fully traffic flowing Cummins Highway, but just at a slower speed. I mean, that, that's that, that's ultimately the, the 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 intent of this project. But thank thank you. Do you have the next question? Yeah, um, Joanne. Hi. Good evening. Um, I'm Joanne, and um, I'm also co-chair of the Cummins Highway Neighborhood Association. Been living here for about over 30 years now, off Cummins Highway. Um, I agree with a lot of what the calls are saying, but I'm not sure if there's time to change much. I'm suggesting maybe the rugby in Savannah add in a stop sign or maybe another set of lights. Um, the first set of lights. On Cummins Highway is actually the eg exit of my street, which is Rockdale. Then you have where the blue line commuter, purple line commuter rail is. And then there's not another light until you get to Itasca. Um, so maybe that's a suggestion for adding another set of light. Um, I too think that maybe it's pointless now, but the assessment started in 2019. Everybody was home. That's pretty much I traveled and walked the streets and ran every morning and never really saw this, you know, anyone approaching me to discuss what they, you know, what we think of this uh, new plans. It's desperately needed. The roads are horrible. They're dangerous as is <laughs> without that right now. There are a lot of kids that travel. There are a lot of buses. Um, I did hear on the call that, which I didn't pick up at the last meeting, the two-way is going to be back into effect from Lopez Funeral Home. Is that correct? And just a one lane from that point on to Woodrow. I just want to confirm if that's the case. Um, also, I, I may have missed this, but... Uh, What's the exact location that the construction is going to be starting? That way we can pass on to our neighborhood, um, you know, re residents. And given this is starting in April, I personally think there should be already signage, digital signage, probably placed in two locations, maybe at the commuter rail stop and then at Woodrow, letting the neighbors know and the, the the drivers who actually flow through this area, hundreds of cars every day that destruction is starting with a digital signage stating the date of when the construction begins. Yes, thank, I can, thank you. Thank you. I can take that last question real quick and that we will be adding um, signs along the corridor um, so that folks walking down the street driving can learn about the project and it will have the website and contact information on those signs as well. When is that yeah, going to be placed out? Is that when the construction's already started? I think personally it should be like effective immediately. April is literally around the corner. Yes, absolutely. We're trying our best to get them out as soon as possible. Okay, and then I'm not sure if I missed this one, what what lane? Are you starting on both lanes? What side is the construction plan? To, do we plan to start construction? And I know it's hard to get equipment off the road, but again, some the, someone else had this question, is this gonna be on the weekends, which gets busier? Um, equipment's gonna be left all along the road. This is going into like a year and a half project. Although I know it's needed, 
I just want to just have everyone thinking a lot more of the residents that are here every day and the way that we're able to maneuver around the city. If, if I may jump in here. So um, with that question you asked about the equipment on the road, uh, the contractor, McCourt, he, he's um, investing investing his time along with uh, his stakes in the community. Um, actually, he's looking to take resident of, of an office space over on uh, Tampa Street by Seminole. Um, as far as looking looking for sites there, off of Cummins Highway to be able to bring his equipment to, to uh, as we call the lay down spot, um, that's out of the way, that takes, that, that's gonna take away from any type of um, um, congestion on, on Cummins Highway. Um, we're working along with, we're trying to work along with uh, the utility companies as we stand right now, where we said for a start date of April, the middle of April, we're still working through some, through some coordination with some utilities on on the process there so we so we can get a better start and work out um, issues. As you know, um, being a long time Mattapan resident myself, um, along that corridor, there's a lot of ledge there, a lot of things to um, to to address as, as they embark upon this, um, this construction project. Yes. Are you able to answer the construction? What length, like, uh, I'm assuming that you don't know, plan to start constructions on both sides at the same time? Um, no. Uh, we're working some plans out with BTD. I'm sorry, with um, what do you call it? A, tra a transportation plan um, to work along. We're not looking to, we're not looking to take out both lanes at the same time. Um, just trying to coordinate so the traffic flows and, and the work can proceed there. So we're still working that that plan out. Okay, I appreciate yeah, that. I, and just to be clear, sorry, just one more question. I think I saw it in the chat, but I just wanted to be clear for everyone else. Are you planning to start, is construction planning to start at Woodrow, which is like the cemetery that coming over Woodrow. the hill there from Woodrow? Oh, no. Woodrow right. was, would, would have. Would have, sorry, would have. Sorry, would, would have. Would have and Hobbit, yes. We're looking to would start have. Have working now. Okay. That's as we stand right now. That's, what we, that's as we stand right now. And I gave an April date. That's at least a date that we're targeting with, that we're targeting with, but that's not a hard line date. Hmm. Okay. As I said, because we're working along with utilities and coordinating some things that, we, that we're that we looking along there too, that we have to embark upon. Okay. I appreciate that. So then that definitely makes me reiterate again, the, the need for signage. I, I do agree yeah. with you. No, yeah. Carl, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, and I just want to jump in quickly, um, just to answer your questions about signage. Um, we have included. Uh, I, I was just going to mention um, that we have included in the contract um, um, changeable message message signs um, as part of this project. So essentially, the signs that you mean indicate or highlight that you mean there's construction going on. Or that you mean a change um, in the traffic configuration is happening. Um, I believe that we did that as part of the the pilot, um, so that's something that 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 the contractor should be installing as part of this project as well. Um, regarding traffic signal Savannah Rugby, we are looking at um, not specifically a traffic signal, um, but we are looking at potentially putting an RFB, which is a rectangular rapid flash beacon um, for pedestrians who need to cross if it's warranted in the future. Um, Ultimately, we, we look at um, warrants and whether it is required um, at a location, and that that directly has to go with you mean the amount of cross traffic that's either coming in or out of Cummins Highway, um, or, or out of the main street. Um, so, as I mentioned, we will be looking at it. We will be evaluating in the future. But as as right now, we didn't see there was a a, a need as right now um, for a traffic signal at that location. But as I mentioned, that's something I'm going to look at. Um, thank you. Um, I, I, we're running short on time, so I just want to make sure that we try to get um, to everyone's questions um, who, are, who are currently lined up. Yeah, um, Sheila. Hi, thank you. Will there be, I don't see it in the drawing, a traffic light at that rotary? And if there is not a design for a traffic light, there needs to be one. You're looking at people's goodwill entering and maneuvering the rotary. And they're coming in from about maybe four, possibly five directions, especially if someone wants to make a U-turn. So without a traffic light, you're gonna have 
just chaos. Mm -hmm. Brought down of cars. So a traffic light has to be put there. Now, you mentioned that you did the road traffic assessment six years ago. You began it in uh, 18. Well, that doesn't seem to be logical, given that the traffic pattern yes. has increased. Mm -hmm. This is now 24. And as it is, traffic backs up mm -hmm. all the way, trying to get through to Mattapan Square. It backs up all the way up to and including the, uh, the rugby area. Now, you're going to put some bumps along the road. I imagine these bumps are going to be on the side streets. How do you imagine with the traffic backed up as it is now, huh. chaos, chaos at the rotary, how do you envision people who live on the side streets to ever get out onto Cummings Highway? So now these folks will have to go what down Blake Street in order to get to um, out to Mattapan. This doesn't make sense at all. And then when you talk about two lanes, one lane, two lanes going to one, and then you talk about how the emergency vehicles are gonna have to go, they're gonna be riding on the sidewalks. How else are the emergency, when you have a backed up traffic, the emergency vehicles are going to have to get up on the sidewalks. Because it'll be just, you talk about slowing down, absolutely you're gonna slow down traffic, There'll be no movement. So bottom line, put traffic lights at the rotary. Stop signs at the places where the side streets intersect Cummins Highway. It's a dream that was conceived God knows when you started it in 2018. This is 2024 20, now, six years later. Your dream cannot stay the same year after year after year without taking into consideration the existing traffic pattern. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so I'm gonna to try to run through your comments, um, your questions um, as quickly as possible. Um, in regards, I guess I'll start backwards. In terms, in regards to the the, the, the approaches onto Cummins Highway, there will be stop signs on all those side streets approaching Cummins Highway. Um, cars will need to stop. They will have to stop in, according to the, the, the engineering design. If they don't, they're going to damage their vehicles. Um, if they're driving at speeds that are higher than, I mean, even 30 miles an hour. Like if they're driving 30 miles an hour over the, the race crossing, they're going to damage their vehicles. Um, so I, that's definitely a, a, a in the field infrastructure deterrent for, for cars driving quickly into um, Cummins Highway. They're not um, going to be able to drive quickly and they're not going to damage their vehicles. They're going to damage people. I, 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 ideally, I'm, I'm trying to express that we're, we're trying to get cars to, to slow down on, on, on Cummins Highway. Like that is the goal. Because like, as you understand, like there, and as you heard, there's a number of crashes along this corridor. We're trying to slow the vehicles down so that it's safer. Um, I, I also want. You're absolutely going to slow them down because there won't be any movement. There'll be backlog. Well, I, mean, I mean, well, I, I also want to add that we had a pilot, we had a pilot implemented uh, for this project. You mean for for over a year, where it was one lane in each direction. You mean vehicles, residents who lived on the side streets were able to get in and out of Cummins Highway. You mean, albeit, you mean we want all drivers to be driving slower on Cummins Highway through Cummins Highway. Um, this design is actually a better a better iteration of the pilot. The pilot cl clearly had, you mean, some some flaws in regards to the roadway because we we the, the, we couldn't actually implement the design as um as it needed to be. Um, we we are looking at um we have looked at the traffic and when I when I when I expressed that we looked at the traffic from 2018, that's when the traffic was the worst on Cummins Highway because of the, mo the amount of vehicles that were recorded using this roadway. 
since COVID, the, the since COVID, when first COVID first hit, the 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 volume of traffic plummeted, um, and it's steadily increased over the years. Absolutely, um, but I I believe the last time we checked, which was um, I believe this year, um, in or, or or late last year in regards to the traffic that was on Cummins Highway, it still has not reached the peak traffic volumes that were on Cummins Highway when we took the the, the traffic counts in 2018. So all that all I'm saying is that we use the most drastic um, traffic information in regards to Cummins Highway in order to design it um, to, to 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 slow vehicles down. So like we, we we took into account that capacity and how it would be it would be able to function on Cummins Highway. So if there's less cars, it'll it'll work even better. Um, and as I mentioned, like we we understand the the traffic approaching Cummins um, approaching Mattapan Square as part of um, the design, and and it it does back up. We we understand that, and we've been out there, we've saw we've seen it, um, which is why we're looking at, but which is why we we're, we're maintaining those two lanes um, that are entering in, into Cummins Highway, um, was east um, eastbound, eastbound into Mattapan Square when the the BTD the BTD. Uh, Mattapan Square project is actually completed and implemented, it will allow for more traffic to flow out of Cummins Highway so that Cummins Highway isn't backing up, so that it isn't dealing with those um, those congestion issues that that happen in the peak. So that, that is something that we can continue to work on. That being said, we can't wait until the, the PTD project is completed to make Cummins Highway safe. Like we, we have the budgeting, we have the design, um, which is why we want to move forward. And, and a lot of those things will come after. So we, we are looking at um, progressing in regards to making to improving safety along this corridor, um, which is we'll then look at you mean traffic signals, crossing signals if those are needed. Um, that is something that we will we will be evaluating. But um, as I mentioned, like we we have the we, we've done the pilot, and the pilot was technically in, in terms of the design a lot worse than what we're proposing because the, like I said, the median the median was it was an impediment for vehicles being able to to maneuver around Cummins Highway. The median is going to be gone as part of this project, so it will allow traffic to flow at a more efficiently, um, but albeit a safer way. What about a traffic light at the rotary? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, we also looked at that. We also looked at a traffic light. Um, what we ultimately determined was that um, because of the traffic that is coming out of Way Boston Street, the traffic that is coming out of Alabama Street, which is essentially a, a, a private way, um, and there's only the number of, of individuals actually access the road coming in and out, um, and the number of traffic that comes out of Greenfield Roadway, a lot of the times the traffic at that intersection would be, um, for Cummins High would be green. So then you would still continue having vehicles speeding through this intersection. Um, I mean, I, I, I ideally, um, we we envisioned or we looked at the design and what would be more safer for pedestrians, for, for cyclists, um, for drivers would be to provide a roundabout. Uh, we do have examples of roundabouts throughout the city of Boston. One, one in particular that I can mention um, is in Hyde Square in Jamaica Plain, um, where it, it, it's... It's it's easy to function through. I mean, to be honest, um, I, I, ideally the vehicles that are traveling from along Cummins Highway will be able to to, for the most part, travel on Cummins Highway um, in a, a, a more efficient manner um, when entering this roundabout. I mean, the are vehicles... you opposed to a traffic light? I mean, listen, just put a we... traffic light there. You don't have to go to, you know. Uh, too much. You need a traffic. Well, if you don't put it there now, you will eventually. I mean, it, it's, it's something that we evaluated, and and we, uh, based on the engineering, uh, we we chose to go with uh, a roundabout to help improve and slow down cars along this corridor. Roundabout is fine if you have a traffic light. Well, sorry to interject, but who is we? Because these, um, it sounds like, um. We, the actual citizen didn't get a vote in any of this. I mean, if, if, I think I'm. I don't know if you said Sheila or someone else, but I had my hand raised and I didn't get a voice, my opinion yet. So I don't know if it's Sheila Burke or Sheila someone. The other lady 
spoke her piece and now this one's interrupting. I would just like to ask a question to get an answer to. Th 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 thank you, Sheila. Um, I don't I don't know if she's next in the queue, but I mean you are you already have the the floor, so please please proceed. Yeah, someone mentioned that um they would like English other um another language as a second language for people that don't speak English. How would they be able to get around on American Legion Highway or whatever? But there are 35 languages that offer for the driver's exam now. How would that be implemented? Right now we have go, stop, proceed with cautious. So if they don't understand that, how would 35 languages be put up? so people can understand it in their language. There was a, um, the host, she had said that they were going to put signs up. Yeah. When the construction begins. Hannah, sorry about that. Yeah. Hannah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so thanks for the suggestion. Um, this is definitely something that we can um, add um using our temporary signs when the construction is complete i think you're asking about some sort of signage um that provides um so the they typical can understand, way yeah so they can understand that you go right or left but i'm right. saying there are 35 languages offered now for the driver's exam how are we going to appease everyone up here in mass with signals in all those different languages. Well, um, maybe you can chat me um, if you have more specific specific questions. But as a city, um, we do have specific. a couple That's set my of specific yeah. questions. Um, so as a city, you were going to put signs up, and I'm like wondering how do you get 35 languages and signs put up around that area that's being built. So, so I, I I don't I don't mean to um interject, but um in in regards to the the traffic signs along the corridor, um which with the, the traffic signs that are, are mandated, in terms of the being standards by the state, those are the ones that will be along the corridor that we will be installing as part of the project, which will essentially you mean it'll be arrows to kind of direct people where to go, um in the roundabout yield signs. Um, crosswalk sign, pedestrian crosswalk signs. I mean, no le left on, no turn on left signs. Those are all standard signs that the city of Boston uses, and we we, we will be implementing as part of this project. I believe what Hannah's referring to is additional signage that we will be po po posting along the corridor um, that aren't traffic signs um, to provide people with more information on how to use um, the corridor um, or be able to reach out. To, to the city if they have any questions. Is that, is that correct, Anna? I think that's what yeah. I was asking. <laughs> how, to, how are you gonna put up 35 languages for people that's driving, that do not understand English or do not read English? How would you put up all those signs? Would it be in a light that's flashing? Going from one language to another, or what? No, uh, no, we, no. Go ahead, go ahead, Hannah. Yeah, I was just gonna add that they we have um cardboard signs, and I can I can chat with you after this and definitely okay. show you an example of what we've installed across the city. Um, just because there's a couple other people in the queue, I want to um let ask a question. I'm going to. Um, well, you answered my question, so thank you. And that You're was welcome. the other question that I had. One was already answered in the chat, and now you answer this one, so thank you. Thank you. Um, Shirley, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, yes, uh, my name is Shirley Carrington. I am a 44-year resident of Wood Avenue. Wood Avenue is already 
very, very problematic in terms of traffic and crashes and accidents and deaths. So I'm concerned about all of that traffic is probably detours anyway. But when the construction starts, I think we're going to see an increase in traffic coming down Wood Avenue. So I'm concerned about air quality, the traffic being lined up and, and cars um, putting out all kinds of fumes. And I am just concerned about the increased traffic as people detour because they're going to get to Wood Ave and Commons and they're going to take an immediate right to avoid traffic, all the traffic uh, problems that we're going to encounter as this construction begins. So that's my concern. Any thought given to anything that could happen regarding that detour? Oh, so um, as part of this project, we're not closing the roadway for for traffic. Um, I understand that. You I mean there may be some drivers or individuals who may choose to use cut 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 through streets, um, like you I mean would have. You I mean which is what something that we've kind of heard about um, as part of the pilot. Um, but I mean, when it comes to construction, it, it's it's disruptive. We 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 understand that. We understand people are going to try to avoid it. Um, um, in regards to um, the the safety along the quarter um, or on the side streets, um, that, that as I mentioned, like that's something that we are looking at addressing. I mean, in the future, um, as part of this project, neighborhood the neighborhood um, the safety surge program, which will be installing speed humps along um, the, the side streets. That's something that 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 will probably be occurring um, simultaneously with the. Cummins Highway project. I, I don't know an actual date, start date for when they're going to be um, implementing those speed humps. But um, the city, I mean, we, we're also um, working on looking at what have um, for the future as well. But I mean, it, it's it's construction. It's, some, it's disruptive. We understand that. Um, it, it is also ter um, temporary. Um, I mean, whether it be two years, I know it's, it's a long time to say temporary, but um, we, we, we are we, we ultimately we, we need to take the time to, to improve this street. Um, so we just ask for your for for your, your continued patience uh, with us. If there's any issues, please let us know. Please reach out to us, um, and we'll try to address it um, as as best as we can um, in terms of that traffic or if, if any issues arise. Um, we talked we talked about the air quality. We had the mild on Cummins Highway. Um, I believe maybe during the pilot, um, we looked at the air quality um, along the corridor. It wasn't I mean any different from other other areas in Boston. Um, we're going to continue monitor that, but. Um, in terms of the air quality, I mean, this, from my understanding, was not an issue at this. It's, it's not an issue at this time. Um, but um, but yeah, just ask for your patience during this construction because we know it's, it's going to be disruptive. We just want people to be informed. Um, we want people people to be updated about what's going on, um, so that you I mean they are taking the time and they are ready, um, um, taking the additional time that they may need to, they may need to take. Um, because of of construction um, congestion or traffic that may be result from it, so um, we're just we're just asking for your patience. I need mean, to be honest. Thank you, thank you, um, Gisela. Hi, thank you so much for going into detail um, about our questions. So I have a question about the uh, just put it in the chat the uh, Rotary and the Sunoco gas station. I'm looking at the rendering um, that I just put in the chat and where is the entrance to the Sunoco gas station? Because the um, the idea of the Rotary is for traffic to flow. Um, and so when somebody pulls first, I, I like to know where would the entrance be and also how the sudden slowness and or stop if you will that of that turn uh is going to be handled so for example as i'm driving i'm in the rotary and i'm driving um and i want to pull over to the sunoco gas station i'm going to significantly in the rotary while i'm in the rotary i'm going to significantly slow down and then make a turn um and there's going to be traffic behind me so two questions um where's the entrance of the gas station and then how is you know, uh, a spe a, a, the speeding going to be handled when somebody wants, when a driver wants to pull in this, into the Sunoco gas station. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, the the Sunoco gas station entrances, um, for the most part, um, actually, they're being maintained. Um, so the entrance that there is that there is on Greenfield, the entrance that's on um, 
Cummins Highway, the two entrances that are Cummins Highway, um, the curb, the curb, um, curb cuts for for driveways, those are going to be maintained. Um, ideally, if you're traveling um, eastbound um, on Cummins Highway, which is pretty much from Wood Ave, and you're you're, you're driving towards Mattapan Square, um, you can either enter off of Greenfield Road. Um, so the same way you would do um, now, you would turn onto Greenfield Road and turn into the, the turn left into the gas station, um, or you can continue going through the order, the rotary, traveling eastbound and turn right into um, the Sunoco gas station. Um, what you what you can't do, uh, what we are changing, um, is we're building a median. So if you're coming out of the Sunoco gas station. Um, from Cummins Highway, you won't be able to take a left. So you'd have to continue going down um, Cummins Highway eastbound towards Mattapan Square if you're, if you're trying to come out of Sunoco Gas Station, um, turning on to Cummins. Um, we, we've had a conversation with the Sunoco Gas Station owner about their operations. What they're eventually going to be doing is they're going to be driving eastbound on Cummins Highway, turning into um, Sunoco, and then um, pump it in their gas like they normally do what they usually do um, and then come out on Greenfield and go around the roundabout to continue westbound um, they looked at it we, we did the, the turning movements uh, regarding their tankers um, and it works so that, that's that's ultimately what, what, what we kind of chose to do um, for that design like the roundabout being mountable is a must for their for their um, for their operations thank you I appreciate that it's just with the rendering I don't because I see the side, um, the raised or whatever side uh, sidewalk, and then uh, green. Uh, the render is tight. The render. Is, I I could probably I, I mean I could probably share share my screen just show it quickly. But I mean if yeah. if anything we can I can send you. If you can share a screen, that would be great. As you speak, that would be nice. Thank you. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Uh, I'll do this. Share. Okay. Um. So this is the the traffic pavement marking plan um, for the roundabout. As you can see, this is all the signage that's showing which direction you should be traveling. It's going to be surrounded in, in this um, in this um, elevated um, island area. Um, but if you're traveling down Cummins, you, you're driving into the roundabout, you can either turn on to Greenfield and take a left in, or you can continue driving on Cummins and take a right in either here or in here. If you're coming out, you have to take a right in both of these entrances. Um, so that is something that we're changing. We did provide a median here um, as an approach to the roundabout as well um, to not have cars turning in and out ahead of the, the, the roundabout to kind of keep traffic flowing efficiently. So sorry, Jeff, uh, Nathaniel Fink here with uh, BTD. If you are going to go westbound on Cummins, you can exit onto Greenfield Street. So even though there's the median there that makes it so that you can only turn right onto Cummins, from the entrance on Cummins, you can go onto Greenfield Street, enter the roundabout, and then make a left on Cummins to continue west. Just wanna add that in in case anyone is concerned about that. Uh, the gas station will still be accessible from all directions. Yes. Thank you, Nathaniel. That's really sad because Greenfield Road already would be congested trying to get in onto Cummins Highway. And God bless the people who are trying to get into the gasoline station from Greenfield Road. Good luck on that one. Thank you. I'm going to move on to other folks in the queue. Um, Pamela. Hi, I have two questions. Um, I wanted to touch on the rotary again, and I just want to um, advocate support for either there being a crossing signal, if not a traffic light, there definitely needs to be some sort of crossing signal at that rotary or some sort of beacon um, that you guys discussed before. Um, I think it's very dangerous. I do not like the traffic sig rotary in Hyde Square. I do not like it when it comes to crossing that rotary. So I am advocating that we have some sort of other signal there. If it's not a traffic light, 
um, it, it possibly a beacon or just a crossing signal that pedestrians could press to cross the rotary. Secondly, can you please identify for, for me what you consider to be a median? You said that coming out of the gas station, you would only be able to take a right to go west, I think you said, towards Mattapan. What, what is going to be there to, to um, discourage people from taking a left turn? Uh, uh, yes, thank, thank you, Pamela. Um, we, we've working, we're working with our design consultant in regards to um, the need for a traffic signal or RFB um, approaching the, the roundabout. Um, I, I understand your concern. Um, I mean, we, we, we are allowing um, what we are proposing for, for the roundabout um, approaches. I mean, it, it's, it's a uh, engineering design that, that that's ultimately takes a look at um, improving spaces for pedestrians and where they should cross, which is outside of the roundabout. Um, the crossing distances are, are, are shortened where um, on one, one approach, you I mean, it's, it's 11 foot wide, um, it's an 11 foot ride, wide um, travel lane. And from there you cross and there's a, 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 a small area where you can, um, you can um, wait for vehicles to, to pass. Technically cars should be stopping um, before you, before, um, while you're in the crosswalk, but um, we're, we're looking at it. We're, we're seeing what we can do. As I mentioned, we are looking at making um, future improvements as part of this project as needed. Um, in regards to um, people taking a left out of Sunoco gas station onto Cummins Highway to drive westbound, um, there will be a median um, in between the two travel lanes. So they won't be uh, they won't be able to to take a left onto Cummins Highway. If they take a left out of Cummins Highway, they're going to be driving on the road the wrong side of the road. Um, so that's that's ultimately. So so there's going to be like concrete there, some sort of concrete. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. No problem. Um. All right. And Fatima, I see you have your hand up. Uh, hi, uh, Davian. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, quick question. I had put an question in the chat about you had a, a meeting in 2022 regarding specifically for um, disability. Is there a, a link to the report or something that came out of that? Um, I didn't see it. Uh, anything that we could share um, just to get a better understanding about how that whatever was uh, spoken about specifically um, to address, because we do have a lot of people who, we, not a, I don't know if it's high or low, but I do know, have seen people who use electric uh, wheelchair, motorized wheelchairs um, on Cummins Highway, on Blue Hill Avenue, but I, I don't think that I've actually seen any specific um, recommendations from anybody, any representation at meetings that I've been at that are integrated where that's discussed at all? So are, is there some report or, or is there a recording of that meeting or that, that you know, you can give us a reference to? Be appreciated. Thank you. Yes. So Jen just um, linked that meeting recording in the chat. And for everyone, this was a meeting that we held um, in 20. 22 about how we does look the different aspects that we look into when we um try to design a street to be safer um so one of the key design features is raised crosswalks so raised crosswalks are flat their site they are um even from sidewalk to sidewalk so instead of a cur standard curb ramp which could develop more issues and cause um uh issues for people using mobility devices the race crosswalk um which we've installed across the city is generally more comfortable for people who are in wheelchairs or using canes or other devices um i'm jeff do you have anything other to add about our how we integrate ada into design um I'll add a few words. Um, ultimately, um, the Disabilities Commission um, and, and their representatives have been involved um, in the development of, of this project and this design um, since the beginning. Um, 
any like they're they're part of the, the the public improvement commission. We need their approval in order to move forward with any of our projects. Um, ultimately, we we take their guidance um, in regards to how we design our streets um, for people with disabilities, for, for people of the elderly as well. Um, ultimately, not only do we want to meet, you I mean ADA, ADA standards, um, AAB um, standards and guidelines, but I mean our disability commission has, I mean even even more extensive um guidelines that we that we want to maintain um and adhere to as part of this project um one of them like i, I think one of the things i can mention is that you I mean they they make sure that we provide um a minimum of five feet clearance um on our sidewalks or any spaces um where, where pedestrians are walking so that, that is something that we we took a look at um providing all throughout um cummins highway on the sidewalks um in areas where you I mean there may be some parking or even you I mean areas where they may be green infrastructure, we are looking at providing um, spaces that you I mean provide access for people who may have disabilities. And and if someone has um, who does have disabilities or is a caretaker or is a person who lives with someone with disabilities, how who do they contact when they come across issues in road design or in sidewalks and curbs? Who do they reach out to? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they can reach out to the Disabilities Commission in regards to this project. Um, if they run into issues, they can, I mean, they can contact me because I mean, we, we are still in um, um, in the construction process. Um, so if there's something that that that, that needs to be flagged, um, definitely let us know um, and, and, we, and we can um, see what we can do from our end. Okay. Um, so, hey, um, I'm just going to chime in here too that if you encounter issues generally, in the city of Boston, not specifically related to the Cummins Highway project, uh, reporting them to 311 is your best bet for getting those resolved. So for uh, this project, obviously, if there are things that come up during construction or with the design, um, the folks from the city on this call are the ones for that. But again, for general issues not related to Cummins Highway, 311. All right. I think this is beyond the long way that I'm talking about. So I'll, I'll reach out to uh, Jeff and whoever the disability commission. Thanks. Thank you. All right. And then Vicki. Yes. Hi. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak again. Um, one of the things that listening to everyone um, is that, you know, we, it could be beneficial for us to have um, wherever the crosswalks are that people have an opportunity to push the button to say it's time that you can walk. And that is a learning tool for even for people who maybe have a different language, but they know that this is a time that they can walk. And that um, drivers know that they can't drive. I know on Morton Street, they changed. There's a left that you used to be able to take and now you have to go down to Harvard Street and go into the first street in order to get back onto, onto um, Morton Street. Um, and I'm pretty sure that that's destruct. It's, you know, challenging for the people who live on that street. But again, someone said something about you know, signage and making sure that that information is given out prior to all of the construction that's going to, that's going to happen. That's important. Instead of having, getting where you think you're going and then realize, oh, I can't go that way. That's not fair. And it's kind of time consuming if you're trying to pick up your child or whatever, or doesn't matter. But it would be 
um, be better and maybe people wouldn't feel so frustrated and annoyed if they have this information ahead of time. And I don't mean when they get where they're supposed to turn. I mean two blocks away. So they know that, oh, I can't go that way. And whoever was saying it, put the information out there before construction. Um, let me take myself a little bit off of um I'm here. So just I just wanted to share that because it is um it it's it, um, it, it's good that we're all here speaking this but this is a good way for us to um inform others who are you know in the community who's driving and biking and walking so and so I can it, Hannah, can I that? yeah oh yes. oh yes can you Sorry, I just want to ask a quick question. Is the city looking to implement different languages for signage across the city and not just in Mattapan? Because that seems to have taken about a good hour in this conversation. So I'm just curious to know, is that a plan for the city to take signage and driving and street signs and all this good stuff across the entire city of Boston? Is that a plan that you all are aware of, that I'm not? No, um, there isn't a citywide plan. Um, what I had mentioned is that as part of street design, when... Um, when we implement new street designs, we sometimes install temporary signage. Um, it's cardboard signs. They they stay up on street poles for a very long time. Um, and that with, we have the flexibility to craft messages to help people adjust to the new configuration and to um, share okay. more messaging. Yeah, so that's what I was referencing. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. Can I comment or no? Yeah, yes, please, uh, Representative. I was happy to hear so, you. So the intersection that Vicky's referring to uh, gets to Kenya's point. Um, I, I heard that, you know, the question about 35 different um, languages. There is what we do with signs and with um, traffic signs is there a, a universal sign that uh, that really communicate across all languages and whether or not I land in Italy or France or in the United States, there are things that universally communicate and that's what the point of all the, the, the signage is. So yes, I think to Kenya's point, I think let's not overcommit to say we're gonna to try to get 35 sign languages in, in, in 35 languages, that's not, what we're going to do. And so to Vicky's point about that um, particular intersection, I'm at it literally right at this moment, um, that was communicated the best we could to folks who are um, near this intersection. But um, obviously, you never tell everyone, no one is going to ever always be in one of these meetings to know that we're about to make these changes. And so the Cortland Street left that we eliminated was one of the most dangerous lefts in all of New England, literally in all of New England. And so it is much safer to go down to Harvard. And yes, we tried our best to communicate that in advance, but there's no way we got to the entire community. And so we hope that obviously the 26 or 27 homes on Cortland Street uh, have found that it's okay to go around the other way on their way home instead of the way they used to go. But there is a button there to Vicky's point I hope that's what she was saying. Is there, I, I couldn't figure out what you're saying. You want one of those buttons or were you saying you didn't want one of those buttons um, that, that you can now cross at that intersection? Is, is that what you were saying, Vicki? I, I just couldn't get that. But over time, no, now that I live I, in this intersection often, I, I can say folks have gotten much better now about going to Harvard Street instead of trying to take the illegal left now onto Cortland because they have realized over time, it, it's not the easiest way for them but they have realized over time it is a much safer left with the light giving you a, a left turn at Harvard and not trying to dash across the street and have all those crashes we used to have at Cortland. Yes, and I'm I'm not complaining. 
I'm not anything. I just, what I'm saying is that didn't realize it. Mm-hmm. And then when I fi- finally figured it out, I was fine with it. I think my concern was that you had to take a left to get back onto Morton to get onto Cortland, which was, it's fine. It's all fine. What it was is that I didn't, we didn't, I didn't know it. That's just my own personal thing. But, and I think, I think your big point is if we can tell them in advance, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Do the block in advance before you get there. Like even if you know, the temporary ties are gonna be there and the only gonna be there a couple of block bands before the left. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, we're on the same page. The unfortunate thing is that you have this um this the signs that say, you know, there's a pedestrian signs and people are still not understanding that you can, you have to stop. I saw the car on the right stop. There's a, and this person's getting ready to cross the crosswalk. And I was holding my breath because I could not, I didn't know if the car, the car on the left was going to continue to go. So to me, that felt like this person doesn't know the rules of the road. And that was scary. And then you still have people who are taking the left onto Cortland, even though the sign says you can't do that. That's all I'm saying. So I don't I don't know how to I, I see it all the time. And, um, you know, my I'm not going to apologize. It's not anything that anybody has done wrong. I think it's it works if you if you follow the rules. That's kind of how I'm feeling. And, um, you know, it's and, and that's why I said, you know, hoping that if we, you know, have good signage, that people will see it before Cummings Highway reconstruction happens. So they start to understand that you can't do what you used to do. I hope that makes some sense. Yes. Absolutely. Thank, thank, thank you, Vicky. Um, yeah, one more, one more response. Not so much to Vicky, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go I ahead. think after, I think after COVID, I have find not just with signs, with red lights, with stop signs, folks almost treat it as though it's a suggestion, not a rule. And that's just not just with the signs of left turns. But I've seen now folks run lights, go around you at red lights, blow at you when you just come to a complete stop. It's almost like a suggestion at this point. But we hear you loud and clear. Thanks, Vicky. Thank you. Thank you so much for being there for us. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Representative. Um, yeah, I, I just want to add, um, I, I I mean, I think that was the last question pretty much at the end. Um, we, we're about 30 minutes over um, the initial closing time. Um, I, I just want to add, in, in regards to the signage, um, construction management will be working with um, the contract and McCore construction. Um, we did develop a construction management plan with the, our design consultant in regards to this project, um, where it would request for the contractor to, to install um, change changeable message signs, which are the um, the electronic signs, but you can you mean program, you mean some language or term, you mean to inform residents, drivers that you mean whether the, the, the traffic configuration is changing. Um, signs along the roadway to say that, you mean, there's, there's road work ahead or um, work zone, like all that information is technically should be provided along Cummins Highway, approaching Cummins Highway um, as part of the construction. Um, I, I know we um, initially requested for um, a, chan- a changeable message sign to be installed at the um, 
American Legion Highway intersection, um, approaching Cummins Highway, um, as well as um, another one that's um, roughly around um, Mattapan Square. So folks driving, entering the work zone um, during construction, possibly after construction when the construction is completed, to a certain extent, we just want to uh, inform drivers that there's a new traffic configuration along Cummins Highway so that they are aware if they're not familiar with this new traffic configuration, they need to drive slower, they need to drive safer, you mean, so that they can get used to it and understand what the new street layout is and the configuration will be. So that is something that we we have included as part of the traffic management plan. As I mentioned, the construction, man or as construction man management has mentioned, that's still in the process and they're still working on that. Yes, we, we understand April is coming very soon. So we, we will be providing um, um, that information to the community please sign up for the for the for the updates um because i mean that's that's I ideally the, the primary um avenue that we're going to be using to reach out to and provide um information to the community so please sign up for those we'll get those out to you um we'll get any uh, any information up to you vicky we're gonna we're gonna reach out in regards to your business um just to make sure that um that you're aware of what's going on um when they get out there but it looks like they're gonna be starting on the other end so um, you may not have may not have concerns um, as of April, um, but we'll, we'll 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 get in touch with you. Um, I don't know, Hannah. Do you want to kind of jump in and, and close this out? Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, just mindful of time, and I just wanted to point everyone to um, the email address that you can send concerns or questions, comments at boston.gov. There were a few other questions that I think we can answer and we'll try to send an email out with this video recording um, and try to answer those remaining questions. But thank you so much everyone for joining and um, sharing your questions and there are definitely things that we'll take into account and we appreciate the feedback. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks everyone. Have a great thank night. You all. Thanks, Tima. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank Good night. Thank you for your service, Yeah. That's what she said.